Good evening and welcome to Jeevan's News at 8. I'm Harsha. Let's look at the top stories of the day. Nation gave last tribute to veteran Tamil Nadu leader Karunanidhi. Funeral held at Marina Beach, Chennai. Statewide rain again. Idamalaya dam to be open tomorrow. Announced red alert. State government announced relief to farmers. More time given to clear debit. Important laws records will be replaced. Rajya Sabha vice chairman election will be held on tomorrow. NDA opposition candidate submits nominations. Financial fraud case for the Pilianical suspended from priesthood affairs. Jalanda Bishop to interrogate on Friday. Now the news in detail. The mortal remains of Karunaditi were lowered into the burial pit behind the resting place of his mentor and DMK founder CN Anadure at Marina Beach with full state honors. Family members offered sent into the burial pit where the body of DMK President M. Karunaditi is kept. DMK President and former Tamil Nadu CM M. Karunaditi died on Tuesday at the age of 94. The ceremony was attended by several high-profile politicians, including Congress President Rahul Gandhi, Senior Congress Leader Gulam Nabi Asad, Andhra Pradesh Chief Minister N. Chandrababu Naidu, and Trinamool Congress Derek O'Brien, among others. In addition, scores of TMK characters and Kalanchi's well-wishers paid their last respect at Rajaji Hall and also attended the funeral procession. The national flag was taken of Karanadidi's body and handed over to his son and TMK Working President M. K. Stalin. The Kalanchi's teary-eyed family members including daughters Selvi and Kanimuri, son Stalin and Muthu, and the Maran brothers, Karunanditi's grandnephews, also paid respect to the veteran leader. Karunanditi was laid to rest with full state honors as per the directions issued by the Ministry of Home Affairs. His coffin board, the word, a person who continued to work with rest, now take rest. Earlier today, the Madras High Court entered a political row between the DMK and AIADMK, let state government after the latter had denied permission to bury the five-time chief minister at the Anya Memorial and instead offered two acres of land at the Gandhi Mandapur. The DMK's plea for the burial of Kalanjar's body near Anya Memorial has been accepted by the Madras High Court. The court further directed the Tamil Nadu government to ensure and establish a memorial for Kalanjar, one of the DMK lawyer said following the order. In addition, the Supreme Court had dismissed a petition filed by activists Trafik Ramaswamy, who challenged the Madras High Court's order granting permission to bury Karanandidi at the Marina Beach. News Desk, Jeevan. The prospect of Iduki Dam shutters at Charutoni being opened as seemed imminent on Wednesday, with the catchment area receiving over 128mm rain at the intervening night. The water level is 2397.02 feet, up from 2300. 96.28 feet from 9 p.m. on Tuesday. The water level has been raising at a rate of 0.06 feet per hour. According to sources, heavy rain continued in Idiki district and the water level is likely to rise further. Water level in the Mullaperia Dam had touched 132.80 feet. Kerala Power Minister M. M. Mani had last week stated that the shutters of the Cherutoni Dam would be opened if the water level touched 2,398 feet. If the rain continues to lash the district during the day, the water level may cross 2,397 feet. The trial run will be held irrespective of the rain's intensity, Mani had told reporters after an assessment meeting at the Iduki Collectorate last week. The district administration had made all arrangements to meet any eventuality. The orange alert was sounded after the water level touched 2,395 feet last week, prior to the red alert to be issued at 2,399 feet. The full reservoir level of the dam is 2,403 feet. The authorities said people would be alerted when the water level touched 2,397 feet. Following the orange alert, authorities had asked those living Living along the banks of the Peria to stay alert. Orange alert implies that the present condition had the capacity to significantly impact the people in the affected areas. However, authorities said an orange alert does not mean that the shutter would be opened. The final red alert would be issued when the water level touches 2,399 feet and the shutters will be opened only during the daytime after adequate warnings. 
ന്യൂസ് ഡെസ്ക് ജീവൻ heavy rain last a various parts of kerala on wednesday flooding low lying areas and filling up dams shutters of kakkayam dam in kolikoda were opened a red alert was sounded for idamalayar dam in ernakulam after the water level rose shutters of the dam are likely to be opened on thursday with the water level in the idamalayar dam continuing to cross limits due to the heavy rains in many areas across the state KCB authorities have issued a red alert. The dam would be opened on Thursday by 8 in the morning. It is plain that shutters of the dam will be opened for an hour and 164 of water would be released into the Periya River. The maximum storage capacity of Idamalaya dam is 169 meters and the water level is at 168.2 meter presently. Water level in Periya would rise by 1 and 1/2 meter with the opening of the dam. alerted national disaster management authority once the dam is opened the water will reach aluwa within half an hour unlike other dams in the state water level is guarded in meters in idamalaya dam since heavy rains continues in the catchment areas water flow is intense meanwhile the district administration have informed that there is no need for panic idamalaya was under blue alert last week and that's the primary alert Orange alert was issued when the water level reached 167.03 meter. The rains intensified in the state again. Heavy rain continues in the northern districts. The water level in Idukki dam is increasing in an alarming rate. There is heavy rain in the catchment areas of the dam. Jeeva News Kochi The central team constituted by Home Ministry came Kerala and looked into the calamities of flood situation in Alappuzha district today. The team mainly visited Kudanada and Changanasheri and discussed matters in detail with the officials. The central team will submit the report to the center. The Kerala government on Wednesday decided to implement the second phase of the Kutanada wetland ecosystem development package in the wake of large-scale damage to crops and property and recent floods in the area. Speaking to reporters after a cabinet meeting here, Chief Minister Pinarayi Vijayan said it has decided to approach the center for implementing schemes under the package. The chief secretary has been asked to work out the details of the package. In Rai Vijayan said adding Kutanad in Alappuzha district was the worst affected in the recent floods. Alappuzha and Kottayam district have already been declared a flood hit. Necessary directive have also been given to health officials to take necessary precautionary measures to prevent the outbreak of any disease, Vijayan said. Kaashi kadangalukku ee pralaya baadha pradeshath aagumbo oru varshathekku moratorium undu. Appo aa oru varshathekku moratorium nadappaakkan uddheshikkiyana. Adine സംസ്ഥാന തല ബാങ്കിംഗ് സമിതിയും ജില്ലാതല ബാങ്കിംഗ് സമിതിയും വിളിച്ചു ചേർത്ത് ധനകാര്യ വകുപ്പ് ആവശ്യമായ നടപടിയെടുക്കും വെള്ളപ്പൊക്ക ബാധിതരായവർക്ക് വിവിധ സഹായങ്ങൾ വിവിധ ആവശ്യങ്ങൾ നിർവഹിക്കാൻ വായ്പ ലഭിക്കേണ്ടതായിട്ടുണ്ട് അതിന് വാണിജ്യ ബാങ്കുകളും സഹകരണ ബാങ്കുകളും എല്ലാം ആവശ്യമായ വായ്പ നൽകുന്നതിന് തയ്യാറാകേണ്ടതായിട്ടുണ്ട് അതിനുള്ള നടപടി സ്വീകരിക്കും Pin Rai Vijayan also called for voluntary organizations and workers to participate in the flood relief works in Alappuzha district. Besides causing loss to property and agriculture, the recent floods following the monsoon fury have claimed more than 130 lives. A central team arrived in Kerala to assess the extent of damage and losses incurred in the state, nothing that there was a need to design a comprehensive flood forecasting system. The chief minister said state disaster management authority has been asked to conduct a study in this regard and submit a report. Meanwhile, rain lashed some parts of the state, especially Wayanad and Kannur district on Wednesday. Landslips were also reported from Chandanapara area in Kannur district. Some of the low-lying areas in Wayanad have submerged. The water inflow to Idukki reservoir also increased and water levels stood The water inflow to Idukki reservoir also increased and water level stood at 2396.86 feet. Full level of the reservoir is 2403 feet. 
Kerala State Electricity Board issued a red alert and informed that the shutter gates of Idamalaya Dam in Ernakulam district would be opened tomorrow morning and 164 cubic water would be released. This is expected to raise the present water level of River Periyar by 1.5 meter. The water released may reach Alua region in Ernakulam in 5-6 hours. Jeevan News, Trivandrum. Veteran CPM leader and former minister APJ Rajan will enter the ministry again. It is learned that a consensus regarding the same was made between the leaders. APJ Rajan had to resign due to charges of nepotism. However, the vigilance had given him a clean sheet in the case. An emergency meeting will be conducted by the CPM State Association on Friday. LDF will also conduct a meeting on Monday. Meanwhile, they might also discuss their decision with the opposing CPI Chief Minister Pinarayi Vijayan is leaving to America for expert treatment on August 17. It is reported that the swearing-in ceremony will be held before that. Discussions about the return of Jairajan had begun when Minister A.K. Shashidharan, who had resigned after phone call controversy, was sworn in again. Jairajan had a chance to return as the court didn't say anything against Shashidharan. M. M. Mani became the Minister for Electricity when E.P. Jairajan resigned. Currently, there are 20 ministers in the ministry. If CPM brings a new minister without removing any existing one, CPI will lose one minister. A discussion will be conducted with CPI to take a mutually beneficial decision. The meeting will also discuss on who will be given the power in the absence of the Chief Minister from August 17 till his return. GV News, Trivandrum. The Air India team of which visited Karipur Airport checked the possibility of allowing big aircraft left with high hopes. The five-member team led by Captain Randev left Karipur on Tuesday morning. The team examined the possibilities of direct service from Koiko to Jeddah and Medina. Aircraft considered Boeing airplanes with around 400 to 450 passenger capacity, 777 airplane with 350 to 400 passenger capacity, and airplane with 787-8 category with passenger capacity between 250 to 300. The team held discussions with the airport authorities on the requirements and facilities necessary to start service of big aircraft from Karipur. They have put forward some suggestions including changing the marking from parking bay, pushback tractor from the big aircrafts and upgrading the fire category. These requirements were slowly phased out from the Karipur airport and big aircraft start playing. The marking was erased following the instruction from DGC to avoid confusions and small airline pilot. The fire category was suggested to be upgraded from 8 to 9 with an additional ambulance in category 9. The Karipur Airport authorities have said the requirements would be arranged as suggested by Air India soon. Jeevan News, Calicut. The nine fishermen who went missing on Tuesday off the coast of Manambam here have not yet been erased, a defence spokesperson said on Wednesday. Indian naval ship Ajabana and three Indian Coast Guard, Coast Guard ships Vikram, Savitri Bhai Pule and Abhinav are engaged in search operations. <laughs> The nine fishermen who went missing on Tuesday off the coast of Munambam here have not been raised, a defence spokesperson said on Wednesday. A naval ship Yamuna and three Indian Coast Guard ships Vikram, Savitribai, Pule and Abhinav are engaged in search operation. A naval donier, an ICG donier and an ICG helicopter are on task as well. The spokesperson added, bodies of three dead fishermen have been brought to coast and two injured fishermen were admitted to a hospital, the police said. The mishap occurred on Tuesday at around 3.30 a.m. when a suspected merchant ship hit the fishing boat, which was 24 nautical miles off the coast. At that time, 14 fishermen were abroad. The boat had 11 fishermen from Tamil Nadu, two from West Bengal and one from Kerala. Yesterday, the naval donier spotted debris off fishing vessel, which was later collected by a Coast Guard boat. The defense personnel added, The Joint Operations Center in Kochi under the Southern Naval Command is monitoring the entire operation. In a similar incident, two fishermen were injured when a foreign vessel allegedly hit the fishing boat off the coast here on June 7. Jeevan News, Kochi. 
The Union Ministers Anand Kumar, Piyush Goyal and Vijay Goyal, along with the leaders of Akali Dal, Shivasena and other constituents of the NTA were present when Harivansh Singh filed his nomination before Rajya Sabha Secretary General Desh Deepak Varma. Harivan Singh, a first-timer in the upper house and a former editor of Hindi daily Prabhat Khabar, is considered close to Bihar Chief Minister Nitish Kumar. BJP President Amit Shah, Union Home Minister Rajnath Singh and Bihar Chief Minister JDU President Nitish Kumar on Tuesday spoke with Odisha Chief Minister Navin Patnaik separately and sought his Biju Janata Dal support for Harivan Singh. Nitish Kumar also spoke to Telangana Rashtra Samiti Chief and Telangana Chief Minister K. Chandrasekhar Rao and sought his party support. The BJD has not yet decided whom to support, while the TRS had made it clear that it will vote against the NTA. Meanwhile, the Congress declared B.K. Hari Prasad as the opposition candidate for the post of Rajya Sabha Deputy Chairman. Hari Prasad, who is into his third team in the Rajya Sabha, hails from Karnataka and has been a Congress General Secretary. Talking to reporters, Congress leader Anand Sharma said that five seats of nomination papers, five proposals and five seconders were filed by combined opposition. He said leaders of opposition parties in Delhi were present at the time of filing nominations. The election is likely to be a close affair as the opposition bloc has an edge over the Bharatiya Janata Party lead National Democratic Alliance in terms of numbers. The outcome will depend on the stance of parties such as BJD, AIDMK and YSR Congress Party, which could ally with the government in certain situations. National Desk, Jeevan. The Supreme Court on Wednesday ordered the constitution of a committee under the chairmanship of its retired judge to look into the problems in jails including the overcrowding. Calling it a human rights issue, a three-judge Supreme Court bench headed by Justice Madan Bhimrao Lokur observed that the committee will also deal with issues pertaining to inmates languishing in jail despite being granted bail by the court. The Supreme Court further said the Committee for Prison Reforms will have government officers who will coordinate with the retired judge and apprise the Apex Court regarding suggestions to improve lifestyle of inmates staying in overcrowded jails. The bench also said that central government is not properly utilizing the amount it had collected under the order of the top court. Attorney General K.K. Venukopal, representing the central government, told the court, We have multiple problems. Finance is one of the major hurdles. We are trying to overcome this, to which Justice Logger observed, We are also trying our best to solve problems. Also, we are not creating any hurdles in the way of the central government. Please don't try to create an impression. We are making it clear that we have not and we are not criticizing the government for everything. We are also citizens of this country. We don't slam the government without any reason, the judges said. In the recent past, Justice Logur had criticized the government for its failure in handling many issues, including garbage disposal, waste management and Delhi ceiling cases. He had also asked the centre if it had plans to deal with the problems the country is facing, and if so, convey these plans to the Apex Court. National Desk, Jeevan. Bihar Minister Manju Verma has resigned over allegations against her husband, who is accused of the links to the Muzaffarpur shelter rape horror. The police say call records confirm that Minister Manju Verma's husband was regularly in touch with the man who ran the shelter home in Muzaffarpur in which over 30 girls were raped and tortured. The call records also established that between October and May, the minister's husband, Chanteshwa Verma, visited the shelter home nine times, each time for several hours. Confronted with evidence, the minister had admitted that her husband was in touch with Brajesh Thakur, whose NGO ran the shelter home, where girls were raped, beaten, assaulted and exploited over four years. Minister has accepted her husband used to speak to Thakur, but said they didn't realize he was a criminal. The role of the minister's husband came under scrutiny when the wife of an arrested child protection officer demanded an investigation against him. 
Shibha Kumari, wife of Musafupur Child Protection Officer Ravi Roshan, alleged that minister's husband used to visit the shelter home frequently. An initial analysis of the call data records of main accused has not yet revealed whether he spoke to minister's husband after the scandal broke out. On Monday, Bihar Chief Minister Nitish Kumar and his deputy Sushil Modi had ruled out the resignation of Manju Verma, who is the state's social welfare minister. They said there were no incriminating documents to merit her resignation. She will resign when anything that suggests wrongdoing on her part comes up, said Nidish Kumar at a press conference in Patna. National Desk, Jeevan. Father Thomas Pilianikel has been removed from the duties of priest after allegations against him, supervised in connection with the agri loan fraud in Kutanad. Father Thomas P. Lanikel has been removed from the duties of priest after allegations against him surfaced in connection with the agri lawn fraud in Kutanad. He was suspended as part of the ongoing investigation. The action was taken by the Changna Shiri Diocese. He was the executive director of Kutanad Vigasana Samiti. It was pointed out that Pilanikal had availed loans from different banks on behalf of farmer self-help groups by forging documents. The crime branch officials had taken him into custody as his anticipatory bail was rejected by the court in June. Kavalam native and Velenad Block Panjait member, NCP leader advocate Rojo Joseph and KVS office staff Tracy Amma are co-accused in the case. News Desk, Jeevan. Jalanda Bishop Franco Mulakel may be interrogated on Friday in the non sexual assault case. The prop team left for Delhi and would soon be going to Jalanda for interrogation. Apart from the bishop, the statements of the other priests in the diocesan administration will also be recorded. The police have made a questionnaire with almost 50 questions for the interrogation. The prop team is currently in Delhi. The police have recorded the statements of Ujjain Bishop the other day. The aggrieved nun had never filed a complaint stating Jalanda Bishop had sexually assaulted her, said Ujjain Bishop Mar Sebastian Varikil in a statement. News Desk, Jeevan. Sahradeya Vedi's awards for excellence for the year 2018 declared at Trishur today. Jivan TV Chief News Editor Babu Velapaya gets the award for renowned media person. 10,000 rupees and citations include in the award. Sahradeya Vedi President Dr. Shurnur Kartikeyan says that Professor P.C. Thomas, K.R. Rajan Master, Dr. Khadija Mumtaz and Kadail Parameshwaran get award for their remarkable achievements in their fields. The awards will be distributed on Sunday at the Drishya Madhyama Award Gurukanade, Jeevan TV Day, Chief News Editor Babu Velapai Kana, Ingal Kalam Perijela, Alai Rikim. The main accused and the murder of a family at four at Mundamudi near Todupura in Kerala's Iduki district was arrested by the police on Wednesday. The investigation team nabbed Anish from his friend's house at Aneria Mangalam and on Ernakulam, Iduki district border. The bodies of Krishnan Kuti, who was into witchcraft, his wife Sushila, daughter Asha and son Arjun were found in a pit near the goat shed on August 1. Cobbs had arrested Anish's aide Libish from Todupura earlier. The police said the murder was plotted by Anish, a resident of Kurangati near Adimali, to loot the house and collect palm leaf manuscripts in possession of Krishan Kuti. The duo had taken away the gold jewellery kept in the house. After collecting details from Libish, police had carried out a search for Anish in the forest areas near Adimali. Following a tip-off, they raided the house of Anish friend on Tuesday night and arrested the main accused. According to the police, the duo had also abused the bodies of the women after the murders. The main accused was trapped with the help of a Spectra mobile call tracker system brought from Malapuram. The system helps to track calls made through different service providers under the same mobile tower. It is suspected that apart from financial dealings related to black magic, 
Krishnan Guti also had links with idol smuggling gangs. The examination of phone calls was crucial in cracking the case. The investigation team examined Krishnan Kuti's mobile phone and scrutinized the calls during the past six months. Since they couldn't get any clue, the cops looked at calls made even before six months and found that one person used to call regularly. The calls had come from Anish's phone since he had planned to eliminate a Krishnan Kuti's six months ago. Anish had stopped calling Krishnan Kuti. This triggered suspicion among cops. Jeevan News, Iduki. Double Ho is a manufacturer of ethnic Kerala foods, is introducing instant breakfast ideas as part of its expansion program. Double Ho's brand ambassador and actress Patmasri Shobhana launched the product through video screening. Vinod Manila, Food Managing Director of Manila's Group, Sandosh Manila, Director of Manila Group, Joe Renji, General Manager of Marketing Sunil P. Krishnan spoke at the press conference in Calicut. Sports News brought to you by Swanta. Sports News brought to you by Swanta Mudipole Natural Look Gulf Gate Hair Fixing. The Indian cricket team would expect its floundering batsmen to take more responsibility in pursuit of its series leveling victory in the second test against England starting on Thursday at Lourdes. Had captain Virat Kohli got support from his batsman in Birmingham, the scenario would have been completely different. The world number one test side came close to the taking lead but fell short by 31 runs. The mood in the Indian dressing room though it's quite upbeat. Two days before the game there was healthy amount of grass on the Lord's pitch. It is expected that the groundsman will shave a few bits off before the first ball. But even if they don't, the general expectation is that the pitch would turn out to be quite dry. This has also prompted a rethink in the Indian camp as to what bowling strategy they would want to go in with, despite India's overall failed batting effort at Edge Batston. Bowling coach Bharat Arun ruled out playing an extra batsman here. He also mentioned that the second spinner could come into contention. In that scenario, Umesh Yadav can expect to be left out with Ishan Sharma, Mohammad Shami and Hardik Pandya handling the peace duties. Sports Desk, Jeevan. News brought to you by Swanta Mudipole Natural Look Gulf Gate Hair Fixing. Before we wind up, let's look at the headlines once again. Nation gave last tribute to veteran Tamil Nadu leader Karunanidhi. Funeral held at Marina Beach, Chennai. State wide rain again, Idamalaya Dam to be opened tomorrow, announced a red alert. State government announced relief to farmers. More time given to clear debits. Important loss records will be replaced. Rajya Sabha vice chairman election will be held on tomorrow. NDA opposition candidate submits nominations. Financial fraud case for the Pilianical suspender from priesthood affairs. Jalada Bishop to interrogate on Friday. And that's all for now from the English News Desk. Thank you for watching and good night.